I'm doing a run of Pokemon Soul Silver using an all shiny team from the cute charm glitch in a world where 20% of the wild Pokemon are shiny. This time, we build up our shiny team and take on Faulkner. Last time, I talked about how I set up the Q-Charm glitch, jumped through a lot of hoops in Pokemon Platinum to find a Cleffa who could activate the glitch, meticulously reset my Soul Silver game to get the right trainer ID, and finally got up and found my first shiny. Now if you want a recap of how I did all that, you can check out my last video. In this video, we'll have to build up our shiny team before we can challenge the first gym. As a reminder, in this save file, as long as we have a Pokemon with Q-Charm in our lead position, Every female wild Pokemon has a 20% chance of being shiny. First though, I'm going to tell you guys about the rules that I'll be playing by in this run. Rule number one, shinies only. The only Pokemon that I may use are shinies. However, I can use my non-shiny Cleffa stud to find more shinies, and I can also use my starter Pokemon since he wasn't able to be influenced by the Q-Charm glitch. I don't have to keep my starter in my party at all times, however, there's one incentive to. Rule number two, Nuzlocke. Kinda. Most of you probably know how a Nuzlocke works. If a Pokemon in my party faints, I can't use it for the remainder of my run and I have to put it into a separate box. However, because I'm not as hardcore as some of the YouTubers that I really admire, I set myself an easier clause. If my whole team faints, I can start over from my last save. Personally, I find this more rewarding because I can go into a battle not knowing too much, but then can analyze my mistakes from before and try again. And it's a little bit less pressure. For anything less than a full wideout though, I won't reset, and I'll accept the results. Oh, also, this rule doesn't apply to my starter Pokemon. Because Ototo was cursed with being the only non-shiny in a shiny world, we'll make it up to him by letting him live, even if he faints. Rule number 3. No switch, no items. This is pretty self-explanatory. I have to keep my battle style at set, and I can't switch in anticipation of a new Pokemon being sent out by the other trainer. I also can't use any items during a trainer battle. However, I can use items when out of battle, because this ain't Battle Pyramid, and god, I really hated that place. Rule number 4. No unnecessary leveling up. Generally, I will avoid avoidable trainers in the wild by walking around them whenever possible. I will also not purposely grind before fights to level up, and I usually run away from wild Pokemon when I can. However, if I catch a Pokemon who's significantly below the level of the rest of my team, I'm allowed to level it up to a reasonable degree. Alright, that's enough for the rules. Last time, we left off with having caught our first shiny, a Weedle named Heedless. Encouraged by my result, I immediately catch another one, a Pidgey in the grass who, owing to her bright gold color, I promptly name Alagold, in honor of Backstroke of the West. It's a great series and you should definitely watch it if you have time, by the way. She's going to come in handy later, because we're going to have to go through the Sprout Tower and face a lot of Bellsprout eventually. We slog through the route, making a stop in Dark Cave along the way. We can't really make too much progress in here because it's just too darn dark. But we do encounter a green Zubat, who I catch and promptly name Ramen because I was craving ramen. Did I mention it's too dark? So we just go back out and finish the route to Violet City, dodging most of the trainers along the way. We then enter Violet City. We can't yet face Faulkner, the gym leader, because we have to do some shenanigans at Sprout Tower for some reason. In Sprout Tower, we find to our surprise that there's actually no Bell Sprouts, but there are a ton of Rattata. Oh, that reminds me, earlier I had caught a shiny Bell Sprout, which I named Hell Sprout. It knew only Vine Whip, but I liked its style. There's a lot of forced encounters in this tower, which is good because my team is pretty underleveled at the moment. Alagold in particular earns a lot of kills after learning Gust and is able to sweep the sprouts pretty handily. Working our way up the tower, we reach the top, where we find the Elder has just lost to my rival. Oh, I forgot to mention in the last episode, but I named my rival Tripe. This was because his bright red hair reminded me of some delicious spicy tripe that I had had for dinner. Anyways, Tripe sneers at the Elder's advice and takes off, and the Elder, in a decidedly bad mood, decides to take it out on us. The Elder of course has two Bellsprout, but also a rather highly leveled Hoot Hoot. Alagold handles it without too much trouble regardless, and reaches a high of level 11 along the way. At some point while slogging through, Heedless also evolved into a Kakuna, but still doesn't really know any damaging attacks besides Poison Sting. The Elder gives us Flash, which is downgraded to a TM in this game. We've gained some levels since Sprout Tower, but unfortunately our highest members are still a level 7 Ototo and a level 11 Pidgey. I decide to hell with leveling up, and I go straight for the gym. Being the first gym, we're able to just skip all the prerequisite trainers and head straight for Faulkner. 
I haven't really thought of a good strategy for this battle, but I figure I'll just try to rely on my two strongest Pokemon, and if it doesn't work, then oh well. Even though Ototo is underleveled, he's able to chip away at Faulkner's Pidgey, and then we send out our higher leveled Ala Gold to finish Pidgey off. However, battle attempt number one goes south shortly after Faulkner will send out Pidgeotto to come. Pidgeotto's level 13 bulk and higher stats prove too much for us, and he's able to down Ototo and Ala Gold, who are the only real Pokemon capable of carrying our fight, as unfortunately the rest of our team is just a bunch of low level bugs and plants in a level 6 Zubat. Perfect for a flying gym. Shortly after, Faulkner hands us our first game over. After whiting out, I reconsidered my strategy and remembered the nice man on Route 31 who said that he caught rock types in Dark Cave to fight Faulkner. Without further ado, we hoof it back to Dark Cave where Stud forces the appearance of a female shiny Geodude. At first, I was going to name her Geo Gal, but after some thinking, I decided to flip her name to Gal Geo, which is in no way a reference to Gal Gadot. As Gal Geo is quite underleveled, we face her off against some wild Pokemon and she successfully hits level 7 for attempt number 2. The run gets off to a promising start as even at level 8, Gal Geo is able to easily shrug off Pidgey's attacks and KO it with Tackle. Unfortunately, this time we find that while Gal Geo resists Pidgeotto's attacks quite well, it's not able to damage Pidgeotto much. Pidgeotto's use of Roost means that it can handily outstall us and still KO us. After a valiant struggle, Gal Geo, Alagold, and Ototo are all KO'd. We lose again and go back to the drawing board. This time, I decide that Gao Geo needs a rock attack to damage Pidgeotto at a fast enough pace to actually KO it. Luckily, a rock move is not too far away, with Rock Throw being learned at level 11. We take out our frustration at losing twice on Faulkner's lackeys, in the process reaching 11 and teaching Gao Geo Rock Throw. We go for a third and hopefully final round with Faulkner, as I would really like to not be stuck here forever. I mean, we have to do better with a super effective attack, right? As we're still slower, Pidgey opens with a sand attack to annoy us. I use Galgeo's newly learned Rock Polish to hopefully outspeed Pidgey, although I don't know what their base stats are. Galgeo successfully goes first, but misses the Rock Throw. Pidgey's tackle in response does absolutely minuscule damage to Galgeo's base 100 defense. Yes, it's really, really high. In the next round, Galgeo's Rock hits Pidgey square on the noggin and brains him, giving us an impressive one-hit KO. Well, that was just the warm-up. Pidgeotto is the real test. We miss again with Rock Throw, and Pidgeotto takes us for a whirl with Gust, which does more damage because it's a special attack, and Galgeo's special defense is really low. On another Gust chips us down to about two-thirds HP, but this time, Galgeo's Rock flies straight and true and hits Pidgeotto for a good two-thirds of his HP. Faulkner tries to be annoying with some trite encouragement, but the words are barely out of his mouth when Galgeo moves first again, smashes Pidgeotto with a rock, and earns us our first badge. It is what it is, and we have our first badge in hand and no one in our team officially died in the process getting it. We've successfully gotten Faulkner and his birds to flock off, gotten a TM for Roost, and we're on to our next challenge. Tune in next time where we deal with Bugsy, a rampaging Scyther, and an extremely persistent Kakuna. Also, one of our team will unfortunately leave us forever, but who will it be?